welcome to everybody that's joining us. Um, for those of you that don't know, we do these Instagram lives with very triple bottom line aligned brand partners, fa female founders, um, or specialists. And so today I'm really excited to welcome Anna. She's the founder of Hormone University. Um, actually, it was our director of business relations, Caitlin, that came across your brand. And I just thought it was so important. So from the understanding, what you're doing is for consumers, you're vetting how products interact with your endocrine system, how what you put on your body could potentially impact your hormone levels. And that angle is what we're gonna talk about and how that addresses fertility. So with that, I would love for you, Anna, to introduce yourself to those of you joining from the natural nipple community. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lauren, for that introduction. And hi, everyone, whoever is coming now or whoever is coming later um, when they want to watch this. And uh, yes, I'm the founder of Hormone University. And the reason why I founded the company is because of my own journey with hormonal health. Um, and back in 2012, I started studying endocrine disrupting chemicals as I worked in mm -hmm. the stream and personal care. So um, I spent over 15 years uh, working for very, very well-known brands. And uh, since I went through stage four endometriosis, um, it was super crucial to me personally to understand what I was using on a daily basis, right? Yeah. And so that kind of led all these years later from 2012 when no one ever talked about endocrine disrupting chemicals right yes he um, <laughs> become a pillar a very important pillar to our company um there are no certifications out there that address endocrine disrupting chemicals specifically yes there is a lot of about clean beauty and uh, clean but clean is such a generic uh, word and it can have very different meanings and so we wanted to be very specific in what we provide so thank you for having me I love what you guys are doing and it's very much in line as well with our value system so happy to go through the crazy world of endocrine disrupting chemicals but I want to say to anyone listening to this now or in the future that um, we can always find a positive angle to this and we can all contribute Absolutely. to uh, kind of like a, a clean life. Absolutely. And yeah, for those of you that are listening that maybe aren't familiar with my background, um, I, I love what Anna's doing from a personal angle because uh, my name's Lauren. I'm the founder of The Natural Nipple Background by clinical training. I'm a primary care nurse practitioner. Within that realm, I really saw that by the time a patient reaches me, there's so much misinformation that they've already received uh, in terms of like what is impacting their health. And typically we're getting them once there's already a manifestation of some sort of disease or disruption in, in your health. And so um, I also became a researcher specifically of the microbiome in preterm babies. And that's really what led to the innovation of the natural nipple. I saw the one thing we can really control is giving breast milk to babies for longer. That's not easy for 92% of parents to do. Standard bottles just were never bioengineered from breast. We're quite evolved females as humans. And um, the bottle industry really had to step up to if we were going to feed babies with bottles and then get them to latch back to breast. So that's how that innovation was born. But I say all that because I, I just wanted to validate how much noise there is in the market. And even if you do have a clinical background or a research background, it can be really, really challenging if you're tired on the way home from work, have a baby that you need to feed and you're reading labels and you're like, okay, like what does this mean? And therein comes your yes. brand hormone. So can you walk me through like, okay, I'm at Whole Foods and I'm picking up a product and I see your hormone university label on it. What have you done to give that stamp of approval yes. on a lotion, for instance? Yes. So the process that we go through 
is as follows. Um, we've got a board of experts that um, review every single labeled and non-labeled ingredients. And this is an important point because unfortunately, there are a lot of brands out there that do not specify every single ingredient. Yeah. And our board um, consists of several people um, one of them who is the strictest and very tough when it comes to reviewing a product, uh, she, she's an environmental science expert and knows every single chemical out there. I mean, sometimes I'm kind of like, my goodness, you know, and she's, she goes so further as to understand, for example, um, if there is one specific herbal ingredient, she would ask, is this ingredient completely free of pesticides? And we need proof of that. Yeah. So, um, so we go a lot further than just looking into actual label or non-label ingredients. Mm -hmm. um, big ones, we ask a lot more questions. Um, it's an independent board. We've got no say on what they review and they would come back with questions or sometimes it's a very straightforward process um, yeah. and, uh, and then they would then approve or not approve uh, that product it's really important to i like what you're doing because <laughs> there's always going to be some level of bias right and by having this independent board of experts and really having them verify like you know from where these herbs or where these ingredients were literally grown having this like trace accountability all the way through um it's it's something that i don't i don't see like being done universally in the market so i was curious like are you focused on us brands right now do you have any uh are you doing any brands absolutely any brands uh, that wants to get that certification. And I want to just point out and maybe just for people to understand, because you and I know what it is, right? Mm -hmm. But um, for like, what, what are endocrine disrupting chemicals? I mean, what does that really mean? And, you know, of course they have that kind of negative connotation, but maybe they don't know exactly the mechanisms of those chemicals, right? So maybe we, we can take, that step back and just explain. Yeah. Um, these chemicals basically interfere with our endocrine system and therefore our hormonal functions. And again, going a little bit further than that, um, most people don't know the that hormones actually regulate so many different things in our bodies. It's yeah. not reproductive. It is a, a number of options, um, sorry, functions that we have. So from cardiovascular to temperature regulation, to stress, to sleep, yeah. uh, to reproduction. And uh, it has effects in our mental health, right? Because the pituitary gland is an extremely important gland that would send all the chemical signals to all the different hormones. And yes. so fascinating wonderful world uh the world of hormones and people just correlate immediately oh it's just reproduction and and it's not it's 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 a beautiful fascinating orchestra of perfection going to different uh parts of the body and so when it comes to fertility or maternal health right the impact of these chemicals can be really significant in both the mother and then getting it passed to the baby, right? Yes, yes. Um, one of the people I talk to at length many times that I, I find ex extremely fascinating and wonderful doctor is Dr. Leonardo Tante. And he, he's a professor at NYU and one of the pioneers um, of writing about endocrine disrupting chemicals. So, yes. And just to some context and perspective, uh, according to the Endocrine Society, there are over 85,000 chemicals, human-made chemicals, 
chemicals in the world. Yeah. It's yes. not right. So um, over a thousand of those are endocrine disruptors. So, and they have kind of like very unique properties in what they do in our bodies. And some of them are very well studied and some, some of them are not so well studied. Yes. So Lauren, I could go on forever. <laughs> I, well, I love, I love how you have broken it down uh, because you, I just want to come back to something that you pointed out. Like while we are speaking on the natural nipple on the impact of of hormone disrupting chemicals and how that can play a role in, you know, the mother's health as well as like conceiving it all. And then once you have a baby and you're breastfeeding them and you're pumping milk, where these hormonal disrupting chemicals can show up, endocrine disrupting chemicals can show up. But I think that you really positioned it so well in terms of the endocrine system is, is really like this tight feedback loop you use the word orchestra and I really I think that's so beautiful because we have these biological objective markers and the means of chemicals and your endocrine system is basically measuring these constantly so it's like positive feedback loops and negative feedback loops so basically if you're putting something on you or in you that your body confuses is like oh i've made this you know like there are as you said a thousand of these endocrine disrupting chemicals that can your body is like oh wow this is so similar to a chemical i make maybe i don't need to make more melatonin for my pituitary gland just as an, an example of one thing and to bring that out of the context of only reproduction and maternal health if you're not sleeping you can you can count on your inflammatory, like inflammation levels rising, and that's going to affect your cell turnover. And I think longevity is such a buzzword these days. And really, what longevity boils down to is how well controlled, specific, and sensitive and specific your inflammatory response is to work for you against those things that are actually invaders. So, um, yes, that's just me. Knowing starting out because I thought you the orchestra example is beautiful and there's a lot that we don't know as you said like while a thousand of those chemicals are listed as endocrine disrupting I think what's important is that we are especially with our, our little ones just being very conscious of the you know the data that we do have let's bring that to good use like if we know something is really going to disrupt our sleep balance or our cell turnover, like let's avoid putting it on us if possible. Um, I know this wasn't a part of the, like the prep talk, but out of curiosity, have there been particular brands and you don't have to name drop them, but where your advisory board discovered like, whoa, this chemical and like, can you name the chemical was in such a high percentage and we know it's correlated, for instance, with like PCOS. Let's bring it to like a really specific condition. Yes, uh, yes. And I can only say the actual product and that was um, uh, menstrual, um, gosh, uh, underwear. Yeah. So, um, that is something that we have been kind of shocked uh, because PFAS is a very dangerous chemical. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, found in many, many of those um, of those uh, underwear, menstrual underwear. Right. Yeah. So we ended up being contacted by a wonderful uh, mother founder, whose both daughters had PCOS, and founded. A company to create this menstrual underwear uh, mm -hmm. without, but unfortunately, the the big brands, some of the big, not all of them, but some of the big brands, we have been yeah, like, okay, we're not going to go ahead because, they, of course, they're very aware that um, that chemical is present. So that's just one example. And I think, since you're on the subject, what um, I'm always keen to kind of add value to these talks and, you know, just tell people what they should be 
looking out for, right? Yeah. In everyday things that we do. Um, and yeah, PFAS is one of them, but um, we can talk about several chemicals and where they're found so that, you know, they can be careful. Um, and gosh, BPA is another one, right? So BPA, you know, we have this BPA free, right? Um, and that is for usually for plastics, but mm. sometimes maybe don't think about the fact that canned foods have, you know, the lining the, the, those the, that packaging is just horrific right full of BPAs yeah. please if you buy canned food and we all do right just look out for that BPA free um, it's really really important yes another one I mean toys how crazy is that um, oh my they use BPA right so just that's just one chemical um, there are, in fact, 1,200 chemicals that are forbidden in the EU, mm -hmm. 19 in the USA. So that also gives you, you kind of like the level of, of the European Union. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm happy being European that, that it's been the pioneer um, uh, continent to, to really take a step and, and be extremely strict. and. The reason why I also looked into this back in 2012 is because I was working for this cosmetics brand and um, we had to relook into every single formulation. And that was a, a pain in the, in the neck, as you can imagine, if you have a lot of products, right? But uh, it was certainly an eye opener. Yeah. And initiative by the European Union. Absolutely. And I think. Um, like kind of looking at this through the lens of, of technology and polymers that we have now available to us and innovation. Um, I would just like to say, like, you know, if you hadn't done that due diligence with these early brands and really democratized this data and like brought this consumer awareness around what endocrine disrupting chemicals are, then the market or the industry players wouldn't really have a chance to disrupt and to innovate. So now I see that as, I see that as massive opportunity. Like when I think about global impact and how clinicians or researchers can actually reach the most people, my personal lens is that you can do that through really consciously led innovations. And uh, if I may just tell a quick story, because this has been a six and a half year journey. We just finally were commercialized um, after literally getting the same grants that back NASA to make a bottle so much more like breast shape, feel and mom's milk flow. And it shocked me that like for 200 years, we've been making food grade silicone nipples or actually less than 200 years, this food grade silicone. And like just no one even and was like, well, what is breast flow like as the baby grows and develops? And how can we make this benchmark to meet those needs so that mom has seamless and stress free transitions if she has to go back to work or if a caregiver needs to provide pumped milk? And really in starting this journey with a handheld 3D scanner, I was like, okay, well, maybe we can 3D print one unique for each mom. But as you begin to develop your awareness of like the polymer worlds and how that could introduce particulate matter or chemicals that are not safe for baby, we really had to come back and, and we're limited to the, when I say polymer, I mean like the material, the physical material that we made an infant safe bottle with, and it was food grade silicone. So we had to play with different ways that we can lay it to make it more like a breast tissue so the baby's not getting confused um, and also have patients really close attention to making sure it is you know bpa free and like at certain temperatures it's not going to degrade and um yeah i just think i think the work in accountability that your that hormone university is doing will really help spearhead future innovation because as people discover well like hey look we've been using this substance or this material for so long there's really actually a gap in market for uh, a, a new, you know, maybe more natural material that doesn't include some of these known EDCs to 
to make its way, its debut, and to shine <laughs> and reach reach people. So I think I think with that, I'd love to hear maybe a success story. You know, we talked about things that you help consumers look out for, but maybe you you helped like highlight a really new innovation and help it reach more people and improve their health. Do you have one of those stories? Yes. Uh, we do, but I cannot name as yet. It's a big brand that um, is a household cleaning brand. It's the first, um, the first product in the market, uh, and, but it will be announced. But just to say that uh, once we announce it, it's going to be wonderful. And, you know, what a great you know, trust you can put into a brand. As you, as you just mentioned in your own journey as a brand, right? Um, how, how wonderful that consumers can actually trust you. Um, yeah. and know that that's safe for them, right? And their, and their babies. So um, same way with this particular brand and first disinfectant household is with completely botanicals and- Wow. It's, it's a, I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> So we're just waiting to to get the announcement um but that is also a very important uh thing to understand is what do we use at home right uh it's not just ourselves. It's what are the things that we interact with yes. from uh furniture to household products that we use daily to makeup uh to perfumes all of those if you're not careful they are of course, right? Yeah. Going to have it without, you know, sounding too dramatic. But it, it, you know, we have to also think about what's happening that you know cancer rates are still going up, and what's happening with fertility, not just in women, in men. Yeah. You know, sperm going down. So it's important to just, you know, I'm glad that brands like yours and and our company, we we just highlight this and we amplify the, the message of, we all have to be careful with what we use so that we don't interact with all these endocrine disrupting chemicals, you know, bisphenol BPAs and phthalates and yes. um, pesticides, etc. So Absolutely. there are so many things on a daily basis to, to really address and just be more conscious. We, you know, we can't change everything in one day, but uh, if we are con conscious about it and we, we really choose the right products uh, and have good habits, then, you know, slowly but surely, we will we'll make a difference. Absolutely. And I know we're coming up on time. This was so informative. Um, I think what I've been seeing, like, lately in the headlines and also what many people aren't aware of is the declining uh, fertility rates globally and that's you know like a multivariate that's influenced by socioeconomic decisions Do you feel safe in your environment Do you feel supported um, also how we're prioritizing you know education and career like early on but again there is this arm of, of environmental exposure that I think that Hormone University is specifically addressing and and you see that microplastics really do play a role in the decreased virility effectiveness of the sperm to penetrate the egg. Uh, maybe, you know, within microplastics, like, are there several different EDCs or is it, um, is that something that you're aware of? Not aware of that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know about my Plastics, but I can only link it to the dangers of plastics, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, being the fact that they they are in small particles, it's of course even more difficult to manage, right? Mm -hmm. Because with a bottle in our hand, we know it has BPA, then okay, we get rid of it, and we certainly do not put it in the microwave, please. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's like when they give you a, a, a coffee in a plastic glass oh, yeah. or or styrofoam like you know like i said we, we just have to think about what we do on a daily basis right i go take my do my manicure they give me they put this cream on and they put this hot plastic gloves i'm like no please do not give me that right 
Yeah. So, um, so every day, it's it's the everyday little things that accumulate. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, just to address your question, effectively, I personally don't know enough about microplastics, and uh, but I associate it, of course, on BPA immediately, right, and phthalates. Absolutely, and I think going back to really round this out what we can do now because i think it's so important one for consumers to first just be the general population to be aware that what you touch and what you encounter in your environment plays a massive role in your health so if we can control this as much as possible before we go to the doctor with symptoms that's putting healthcare back into our hands so that's why i really love shining the spotlight on brands like Hormone University. I think second to that is probably the question that many of our viewers have is like, what do we do? And especially in the West with such a consumer driven society and we want to go fast and, you know, living in a city like New York too, it's you're on a daily basis basis unless you're doing a lot of prep and buying you know you know we actually have some straws here recently that I just encountered that are like made from I think it's like spaghetti like it's actually like food food based you know so unless within your radius other like Starbucks or coffee shops or restaurants are like picking up on these trends it's like what do you do in the interim and I think that you mentioned something really important and it really boils down to philosophy. And so like personal philosophy and consciousness, I think getting your mindset to like, what is the lowest common denominator of what I need to be healthy and really bringing some of this, especially for moms who are struggling with fertility. I know just from friends and from patients, like that anxiety and like also hearing like, oh my gosh, these endocrine disrupting chemicals are in so much of what we touch. Like, I'm just trying to do the best I can. You know, it can be really, really scary. Um, but I think trusting your body, like again, going back to what the endocrine system is, it's this incredibly exquisite orchestra that is a closed loop sim system that is literally designed to communicate with all your other tissues and all your other organs to say, are you working well? We don't have enough of the melatonin or we don't have enough of the follicle stimulating hormone or we don't have enough and and going back to how we came across you it was uh one of our team members was diagnosed with pcos and was that finally was put on her radar of like oh try to eliminate as much of the endocrine disrupting chemicals as possible so if we can just do education really early on so that mothers can pass this on to their children you know these philosophies to their children like you don't need much to survive and be healthy you can trust your body imagine going back to tribe it's like being close to water being close to sun being close to movement or exposing yourself and participating in movement you know these things really calibrate our beautiful and intelligent instrument of a body and we don't need so many creams and this and that to, you know to to actually survive as, as much as we're being marketed them so um, yes. that's my personal philosophy in terms of what we can do to empower people as they're quite they're questioning like what should I buy or or what's validated and as you actually get the the message out about brands that are being very very careful and so um I think just to close you know where can we find products that have been validated by Hormone University yes we are actually building the the actual the, the site the the micro site to highlight those brands um so Yes, we we have to do that so that we can highlight every product that we certify. Um, but just got it started and we have a few there, but we still have a, a bit of a long way to go. Yeah. Um, but what I say, if I may, uh, we do have an incredible product line that will help balance your hormones. So for anyone having PCOS or endo or anything that has to do with hormonal imbalance, our products are really targeting that so Brilliant. um uh it's you know just 
I know that uh, uh, this is an educational moment, but uh, it's important that also people understand that we, we've done so much work to create this product. So, uh, it's been a labor of love, yes. for sure. Yes. <laughs> well, I just want to thank you for that time and energy and care that you put into making that line. And where can we find it? Is it hormoneuniversity.com? Yes. HormoneUniversity.com, exactly. Wonderful. And yes, for everyone joining that wasn't familiar with the natural nibble before, and basically wants to empower their friends or themselves to be able to nourish their baby with the safest, most consistent flow designed after breast, um, patented by the US government. Uh, we can, you can find that at thenaturalnipple.com. Our site is also undergoing renovation today. I think it's about to launch. So it's a very street, seamless checkout process where we're also going to be highlighting other brands that are specifically in the fertility and maternal health space. Um, so we'll definitely send out that information in a newsletter, Anna, when you're ready and your um, marketplace is live. And this, all this information will be linked in the newsletter when we send this out as a podcast and a YouTube video. So if you're just now joining, no stress, um, go to thenaturalnipple.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you'll get the full episode.